Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video. Today, I'm taking a look at an intelligent electric soldering iron. Now, this is a new product that's been sent over by Kaiwitz. They very kindly sent me this one to review. This is the KETSO2, and amongst other things, it features a rapid heat up time, adjustable temperature from 80 to 420 degrees, and a built in screen. Sounds fantastic. Let's have a look, shall we? See what we get in the box. So it's sealed for freshness see what we've got there we go looks very nice big thanks to Kaiwitz for sending me this product to review we're going to give it a really good review and we're going to take a look at it against another soldering iron that I've got here as well so we can compare the differences what do we get in the box right here we go okay so we've got a cable here USB-C wow look at that fairly decent cable feels like it's got silicon coating on it okay and we've got some extra tips with this wow they certainly supply you with loads of extra tips we've got six tips here so what else do we have in here we have a little stand a tiny tiny cute little sponge to go in the cute little stand right we've got instruction manual a very beefy looking 65 watt usb power brick that's got a bit of weight to it that has and here's the soldering iron itself in a nice sort of silver graphite type finish looks very nice certainly got a decent bit of weight to it you can see the built-in screen there and you've got your usb connection in the top there it's pretty easy to swap the tips on these as well you've just got a little collar here that undoes so we'll try that in a sec and we've got a nice little cover for it as well i quite like the cover that's quite nice because you can chuck it in your bag and you're not going to get fluff on your soldering iron tip Right, before we get it on the bench, let's have a look at the specs. Now this soldering iron features really fast heating. Kaiwitz say it will heat up within one second and melt solder within eight seconds. This is running at 20 volts with the supplied power brick. You can set the soldering iron to run on 9, 12, 15 or 20 volts, which you can get from the supplied adapter. Or you can run it off a battery pack at 9 volts or more. So here's the stats for the operating voltages. You can see that to get the fastest heating time out of this iron, running it at 20 volts, 3.25 amps, 65 watts, gets you that eight second melting time. We're gonna be testing this in a moment. The built-in OLED screen gives you plenty of information. You can set it for left or right-handed. It gives you the set temperature, operating temperature, operating voltage, and a heating progress bar plus a whole wealth of customizable settings, which we'll dive into in a moment. Another great feature of the KETSO2 is the easy change soldering tips. Now they've supplied six tips with the kit and changing them couldn't be easier. Literally unscrew the nut, change the tip and lock the nut. Nice and easy. Okay, so here's a closer look at our KETSO2. Got a little peel on there, take that off. It's got a bit more weight to it than my normal Yahoo soldering iron. I like the little cover. That's quite a nice touch. Seems nicely made. This is quite nice, comfortable to hold. Doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of your hand. And you're quite near the tip, which I think is, is going to be quite nice. So there's the actual soldering iron. We've got our power brick here and this cable. Nice little cable tidy on there. Little leather strap to keep your cable tidy. USB C to C. Feels like a silicon coating on there. You get a reasonable length cable with that. I'd say the cable length is actually comparable to what I have on my daily driver soldering iron, so I'm more than happy with that. So you get a paper instruction manual, which is very convenient, and there is a PDF available to download as well if you want to look at it on the screen. But it's nice to have this to hand. And we've got six different tips. So we've got BC2, which is like a chisel tip. BC3, which is a slightly larger one. We've got B2, which is like a point. ILS, it's a finer point. KR is like the knife type tip. And then you've got K65, the smaller one. So it's nice that they give you a good selection of tips with it. I tend to go for the pointed tips more than anything right i'm going to start off with this b2 we'll go from there 
So firstly, let's see how easy it is to put the tip in. All right, looks pretty nice. Got a good heat transfer area there. So let's see. So it should be as simple as undoing this collar, insert the tip, and do the collar up. All right, no fiddling about. I like that. like it when it's nice and easy. We've got our 65 watt power brick here, which supplies the USB-C to the soldering iron. It's also got a USB fast charge socket. And this gives you a maximum 65 watts. So using the included power brick should give you the fastest heat up time. This is USB-C connection on the top. Plug that in. It all looks quite nice. It looks quite premium. It feels quite premium. I will say the cable's fairly, it's got a fair weight to it, but not too much that it's going to pull the soldering iron down. Sometimes with a really light soldering iron, you find that cable will just keep pulling the top of the soldering iron, but I think that's going to be okay. Let's plug this in then. Now we do have a little stand. It's quite small. I don't know how it's going to be. It's pretty light. Um, I will say actually it doesn't move around as much as I thought it would when I first looked at it. I don't think any extra bonus points for the stand. I would have liked to see something I could put the soldering iron in as is more traditional. It does, it fulfills the main purpose of keeping the hot tip off of your soldering iron mat. And I guess going on the portability of the iron, you need a small stand to carry around. You don't want to be lugging something big around. In an ideal world, I think I'd have liked to see something more substantial in a stand, but it does the job. Okay, so let's plug this in. My soldering iron socket is just below my bench, so it's not really going to compromise my soldering iron cable length. That gives me enough length cable. Your mileage may vary depending how far away your socket is from where you're soldering. So you can see now we've powered up. It's giving a visual indication here. It's flashing. Please press the left button to heat the iron up. So there we go. It's heating up pretty quickly. You already see it's getting hot. Now this iron is claimed to have a really rapid heat up time. One second to get hot, eight seconds to melt the solder. All right, so turning the tip. So this iron's pretty quick to heat up. We're on 250 at the moment. So if I change, let's go to the max, which is 420. Always like to max out a new soldering iron. 420, it's going up. There we go, you can see it's getting hot. Yep, 420. There we go. And let's take it back down. Let's get down to about 350, it's a bit more reasonable. So it's a nice clear OLED display on here. It's a 0.87 inch OLED display. The temperature range on this iron goes from 80 degrees C to 420 degrees C, which is 176 to 788 Fahrenheit. So you can see we're heating at the moment. So if I long press on the right button, I'll go into standby mode and then to start it up again simply press the left button see it's flashing a little icon there to tell you to press the left button and then you can change the temperature using the up and down button okay so let's put the iron into standby mode so we can explore the settings so you press the left and right button simultaneously and it'll take you into the settings menu then you can scroll across so you've got brightness there calibration you've got your temperature unit you can switch between centigrade and fahrenheit You've got your sleep time you can change there so if you want to go into sleep time long press on the right button and you can change that from anything between 1 and 20 minutes for the sleep time and then long press again returns to the main menu you can change your sleep temperature as well so if you go in there you can change your sleep temperature from anything from 80 to 200 degrees c you've got a child lock which is very handy so if you turn your child lock on so if you're in standby mode and the child lock is activated, you've got a little lock there instead of the flashing icon. So pressing the left button as normal does nothing, won't turn it on. You've got to press rapidly three times the button and then it will come on. So this is to stop anyone picking it up and just pressing that to wake it. So that's your child lock mode. So handheld will change it from left to right handed, depending on if you're left handed or right handed. So if I change it to left handed, you will see that it's now the right button to activate and your display is the other way up. So if you're left-handed, 
you can have your display the right way up. That's quite a nice little feature, quite like that. Now that's quite nice, I like to see things like that. That's it, so we're now back to left button to activate. So voltage select there, go into voltage. You can tell it what voltage you want to operate on. So if, you've, if you're using an adapter that's not the one that's supplied with it, the one that's supplied will do the 20 volts, no problem. But if you're using something different, like a battery pack, you can set this so it doesn't trip the over voltage protection on whatever you're powering it off of. That's quite cool. So you can tell it to draw a maximum of 9, 12, 15 or 20 volts. You can change the brightness of the OLED. So that's all your menu options. And long press on there, it goes back to your temperature screen. It does state that the normal working temperature of this is ideally 300 to 380 degrees, which is round about, I'm normally round about 350 when I'm doing most of my work. So that suits pretty well. Now, there's another cool little safety feature on here, which is... If you try and start this up with no tip in it, if I take the tip out, the iron's telling me to put a tip in, so it won't let you heat the iron up with no tip in it. So that's another nice little safety feature there. So you've got to put the tip in. I love how easy it is to change these tips. See, now I've got the tip in, it's telling me I can press the left button to heat up. It's actually really simple. I like it. Well, you take the tip out, put a different tip in, do the collar up. Obviously, let the iron cool down before you swap the tip over there you go and that's how quick that is to change the tip on this i like that i like the quick change based on the fact that this is a really portable device and you could take this out as your only soldering iron the fact that you can change these tips about that quickly actually i think that's really handy and i love the fact that they've included six in the kit so that's quite cool so bonus points for the safety features and the quick swap tips. Another thing I love about this is the fast heat up time. Now this iron is claimed to have a one second heat up and an eight second time to melt solder. So we're going to compare this in a minute against some other well-known soldering irons, including my daily driver Yahoo and the T12 Quicko that we looked at recently. But before we do that, let's do some soldering. So let's just pop a couple of components in and see what it's like to use, shall we? Now I normally have my soldering iron on roughly around 350. So we've got this nice silicon grip here to hold it. So let's have a go, shall we? Okay, there's plenty of heat there. Okay, feels quite nice. I'm intrigued to see how it does on the heating up tests. So we've got a whole bunch of well-known soldering irons to test this against. So let's try a quick comparison. This is a soldering iron I use every day. It's a Yahoo K917C. And let's put this against the Kaiweets. They're both set to 350 degrees, similar size tip to the Kaiweets. Okay. Okay, I will say this clearly does heat up faster than that. You can see that straight away. Let's try one more test with an LED, one leg each. Try the Yahoo first. I'm testing with this one because this soldering iron is the one I use the most out of. I have like three different soldering irons I use on a regular basis. I definitely think this heats up better. I say, in terms of just soldering stuff on a board like this, yeah, quite like that. That's quite nice. And I think in terms of desoldering, if you wanted to desolder something, I think the fact that this heats up quite quickly would be an advantage. Okay, yeah, so for desoldering, that's actually all right. The, the fast heat up time is an advantage for that. With this one, you are a little bit nearer to the tip, which is quite nice. And the, the silicon sort of thumb rest there is quite comfortable, I would say. This is the Quicko that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. And again, similar distance from the tip. You've got a, a rubberized part on there, which is not as nice to hold as this silicon one. The silicon one feels rather nice in the hand. Now, because the Kiwiets has such a fast heat up time, we're going to do a soldering iron heating up shootout. So we'll be comparing the Kiwiets to my daily driver soldering iron. 
the Yahua K917C, the Quico T12 that we looked at recently, and a good old classic soldering iron from the past, the Weller Magnostat. Who's going to win? Three, two, one, go. They're hitting up. They're hitting up. It's a close match, this. And the clear winner is the Kaiwits. Less than eight seconds. They were right, and the others are still going. Next is the Yahua, with just under 15 seconds. The Quico at 18 seconds, and the Weller's still going. Okay, talk amongst yourselves while we wait for the Weller. Well, it is getting on a bit, isn't it? Any time now. Is it going to melt? Mm, yeah, there we go. 40 seconds on the Weller. Well, that's not going to win any records, is it? So here's that instant replay of the Kiwits, and it does give that eight second melt time that they claimed. A clear winner there in the soldering melt shootout. So if you're in the UK, you can pick up the Kiwits KETSO2 from Amazon.co.uk, currently on at $89.99. Or you can pick one up from Kiwits.com, where they also ship to the United States, Europe and Australia. That's currently on Kiwits.com for £68 and comes with the set of six tips. But if you want to buy yourself additional tips, you can buy an additional set for £20. So what's my conclusion then on the Kiwits KETSO2? Well, it's a little bit more expensive than your standard soldering iron, but with good reason. Feels really nice to use. The tips are super easy to change, and I really do love the fact it heats up really fast. As we've shown, it does indeed heat up in eight seconds. The OLED screen is great, it's easy to read, and you can change it for left and right-handed orientations. I love the fact it's really easy to hook up as well. Just a USB-C connection, and you're ready to go. And yes, I know what you're gonna ask about stray voltage on the tip. Is it a problem with this particular model? It's gonna be a problem with any product that's using one of these power bricks that doesn't have an earth pin. Is it gonna cause you a problem with your surface mount components? In the main, probably not. But if you're doing something particularly sensitive or you're particularly worried about it, there's a really easy solution to it. Just take yourself a USB-A cable, hook it up to the fast charge port on the power brick there, grab yourself a crocky clip, put it on the USB ground, and plug that in something that's ground to earth, like your scope or your bench power supply. Problem solved, simple. So I wanna make it absolutely clear, it's not a problem with the soldering iron at all. The soldering iron's a great product. It's always gonna be an issue with anything that doesn't have an earth pin on the power brick, but it's only going to be an issue if you're doing really sensitive surface mount stuff. And all you've got to do is use a USB-A cable to ground. Problem solved. So I know the other thing you're going to ask me, that cable looks really thick. Is it not too heavy and pulls the soldering iron down? I'd say not really any more than my normal soldering iron that I use day to day. I guess it depends on your setup. My cable is normally trailing around on my bench, so it's not really pulling on the top of the soldering iron any more than my normal cable would be. You've got this nice little silicon bit to hold on to down here, so I think it's, it's quite a nicely balanced soldering iron. And you'll be able to tell that because you'll see me using it in subsequent videos. And you always know if I like something because you see me using it going forward. Now the lovely people at Kiwits have sent over a discount code for my lovely viewers. So if you want to pick yourself up one of these KET SO2s, and why not? It's a great bit of kit. I'll pop the discount code in the description down below. I'll also link to the Amazon listing and the Kiwits.com website so you can take a look at this and the other Kiwits products, including the extra tips if you need some. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this Kiwitz soldering iron with me and many thanks to Kiwitz for sending this over for me to take a look at. I'll be back soon with some more tech related videos but in the meantime take care and I'll see you on the next one.